So first of all, congrats on all the success with this one. I know you said it's still number one on Screenbox. So have you taken this all in yet? How do you feel about it? Uh, it's still super weird. Yeah. And I'm, I'm waiting for like Personally. someone to, you know, tell me what the punchline is here because, yeah, I don't know. It's very surreal. So I'll give you the mic. They don't need to hear my questions. Hello. That's you. <laughs> this one I can troubleshoot that mic. You can. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Having technical difficulties here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, ah, this isn't my job. Uh, yeah, it's weird. I mean, when we finished making this movie, I thought uh, we maybe made a big mistake. <laughs> and it was no good. So, uh, yeah, it was very scary until we had, you know, the first screening and it went well and people liked it and it's kind of continued. I mean, there's, there's haters, of course, but there always is. So, yeah. But I'm very glad that there's a, a fan base for it. Do you have a favorite found footage, one that you kind of like? Took inspiration from one that scared the living crap out of you? Um, I mean, of course, Blair Witch is like the end all be all of found footage. Um, so that was a huge inspiration. That was one that I kept coming back to while we were making this. I watched it over and over. Like every time I was like, how do we do this? What are we doing? How does found footage work? Because you're like, you're shooting. Um, it, like, you get done with the day of shooting, or I, I did, and I was just like, what did we just do? You know, because I've never tried found footage before. It's all, I, I've made shorts the traditional way, where you know, you, you make it look nice, <laughs> you light it, you get coverage. Um, so we get done with the day of this, and it, it felt good at first. And I'm like, wait a minute, how does this work? Um, so I go back and watch Blair Witch. But um, Willow Creek, that was another huge mm. inspiration. Um, I love that movie. Um, and thinking of the Marrow, Adam Green's found footage movie, I think did a really good job of actually showing you creatures. So that was one I, I looked at when I was like, you know, we gotta make the Frogman show up in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you said Frogman 2 is happening. So Woo! we don't get enough monster versus monster movies. Like we need more Freddy versus Jason. So if there's one cryptid you could put them up against, who you put them up against? <laughs> I don't know if I should say yet. <laughs> Can I give us um, one? Well, there's, there's one monster that's been spoken of frequently going up against Frogman. That's actually not a cryptid um, that I would really like to see in reality. Um, and maybe it looks like a rat. Uh, but I'd say Frogman 2 is kind of like the king of the monsters of what we're doing. Um, so if it was to go any further, I'd say like a versus movie is definitely what we want to do next. But yeah, the this, this sequel, you're going to see more cryptids for sure. Whoever wins loses. Right. <laughs> Although I kind of want to just do Frogman Fox movies instead of <laughs> Frogman versus, like Frogman Please. Fox Mothma. <laughs> 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 the Fresno Nightcrawler. <laughs> the pair of pants. Yes. <laughs> that would be epic. So I know there's probably some people in here who are, you know, wanting to dive into filmmaking. So what's the biggest challenge that you face and something that you would like to tell the audience, something that they can learn from? Um, I mean, the biggest thing you'll face, whether you're starting off or you're 10 years into it, is, um, I mean, if you're, if you're humble enough, you feel like an imposter and um, you're gonna second guess yourself a lot. And I think that's, it's, it's a very painful thing to go through. It's a very scary thing to go through, but ultimately it's a good thing because I know the creators that are just like, yeah, I'm gonna do a movie and it's the shit and it never is the shit. <laughs> and their stuff doesn't get any better. So I think you kind of need that uh, uncertainty within yourself to like keep pushing forward and keep doing better things. Um, so yeah, I mean, starting is the hardest part as, as it is with most things. Yeah. So I know one of the things when we spoke a few months back, you said it was difficult to make it feel authentic, you know, make a found footage film authentic. So with that, how do you as a director try to get the cast to bond and make it kind of pop more? Um, that's a good question because I think uh, none of the three leads had ever met before we started making this movie. And I, I knew them all personally and I had worked with them all personally and like wrote this movie for them. Um, but they had never met, but I just had a good feeling that they had some chemistry. Um, and yeah, I can definitely, like watching the movie, I can definitely tell like what stuff we shot later because I think their chemistry is better that I can tell they're more comfortable with each other. Um, but they were really good about it from the get-go. Um, and I mean, everyone on set, there was no one that we like hired uh, to work on this movie that we didn't know and wasn't like a friend outside of filmmaking. So it was, it was a very comfortable environment, you know, for them. Um, and there's a lot of 
of scenes where, I mean, almost every scene we kind of, everyone had to go hide, you know, like, unless I was operating the camera, which I did most of the time, and Benny was over my shoulder, um, you know, so I think they kind of, they didn't feel like they were on a movie set most of the time, too. Yeah, is there, like, was there anything, a moment during filming that you knew that they were all right for this role? Um, we did, we did one script read, like, table read of the script before we, um, started shooting, and I knew right then. Like, hearing them read it out loud, I was like, okay, I think this will work. Yeah, that's always good. Yeah. Um, so I know you said when we spoke as well that, you know, Dallas, there's a lot of Dallas in you, and there's the story of not giving up, and you suffer from imposter syndrome. I know I do. I'm sure it's some other two in here as well. So has there been a moment throughout all of this where you, like, it hit you that you did the damn thing? Like, you made the movie, you're here now. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I've kind of accepted that there's, like, there's, there's never a chance of um, like watching a movie we've made and having any sort of like objective opinion on it, um, which is just really ironic because I think I, the reason I make movies, I think most, most people start making movies because they love them. Um, and then you, you make movies that you think you would love and you think would be badass and you can't enjoy it at all. <laughs> um, so, you know, my only chance to do that is to like hopefully be in a good crowd that likes it and like feed off that energy a little bit. Um, so that's when I feel like, okay, maybe I know what I'm doing. Maybe this is working. Um, but ultimately I think like every time I release something, if somebody likes it, that's that's all I need to think, all right, well, I'll just, I'll keep, I think I'm good enough to keep going at this uh, whatever mission that I'm on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're doing great with it. I mean, all the success, like I said, it was already number one on Streambox. It's been like that for a while. And Frogman shirts have been everywhere. Frogman Fox is like the slogan of a lifetime. Yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, what, uh, if you could do any other uh, cryptid, what would be like your ideal dream scenario we could film on? Um, I mean, the Fresno Nightcrawler is up there. I really love that cryptid, which if you don't know what that is, it's essentially like, uh, like a pair of phantom pants walking through the woods <laughs> <laughs> that's getting caught on a bunch of uh, security cameras around Fresno, California. Uh, I just think it's hilarious. Um, awesome. Yeah. Does anybody in the audience have some questions here? Yeah. So uh, I'm from Point Pleasant, West Virginia, right? From home of another cryptid you may have heard of, right? And all that stuff. So did you really shoot in Loveland? Or did you shoot in the Mill High Valley kind of when you did is this? Because it looks... When I first saw this, I, I saw my hometown almost, right? Because Point Pleasant looks just like every freaking town out there. But did you actually shoot there? That's awesome to hear you say that, because uh, no, we did not. We shot really? in Minnesota. Ah. Where, uh, where I'm from. from. Fato, Minnesota. <laughs> 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 She's from right. there. Oh, yeah. If you know Minnesota, you, you could probably pick it out. But, um, yeah, I mean, when we started making this movie, I looked into it. I looked into Loveland, yeah. and like they didn't embrace Frogman at all. Right. Um, and I mean, I even talked to people from Loveland and from Ohio that didn't even know what I was talking about. So I was like, okay, I guess we have no one to upset. Yeah. We whatever we want. Right. Um, but you know, I looked up. I wanted to go there before we started shooting. I didn't get to, but I looked yeah. up some photos, and I was like, it kind of looks like Stillwater. <laughs> you you, you so, killed it. I'm telling you, it, it, every town, like you know, once again. Mall fan, it doesn't matter. They all have that strip of that same look and all that. So yeah, it, it fooled me, man. I, I grew up there, so that's pretty well. <laughs> we need to create the uh, Frogman cult. That needs some more <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I got, a, I got a couple. Go but, so they say movies are made a few times. You know, when you write it, when you shoot it, when you edit it. How did Frogman change from you know conception to finished product for you? Um, well, that character Woody from the the gift shop. He used to come back in, um, like when they get back to the Airbnb after like finding him, he like shows up and he's like, you know, but sorry, you guys are right. Like Frogman's real, the cult's real. They took my my sister, um, you know, and so he ends up being like the half man that like leads them into the woods, and we shot a lot of that. Wow. And like at some point, I realized like, ooh, this is not working. <laughs> like adding a fourth character to the to the trio, like lit that late in the game, just like totally threw off the vibe. Mm. Um, and then Woody ended up going missing uh, during the chaos of the woods. And Dallas's mission is to save Woody. And it was like, what are we, 
what is this all about? <laughs> he's going from being obsessed with Frogman to now he's got to save this guy that he hates, you know? And like Now he's got a conscience. Yeah, it was just so bizarre. So we ended up like shooting a bunch of that. I realized like on set it wasn't working. We paused production, rewrote the whole third act. Wow. Um, and then picked up shooting again. Uh, so that was, yeah, that was very strange. And then the ending went through a few different iterations. It was always in a movie theater, um, but we had a couple different versions of it. We shot this crazy scene where like George comes out with the tadpole baby and like, <laughs> spits vomit on somebody's face. And, like, it was very trauma. It was super fun to shoot. And then it was like, what is this movie? <laughs> and, um, and I was like, I think the movie ends when, you know, when Dallas like is finally hitting him, like how he, how much he, destroyed his life in this, you know, this mission. So. How long did it take to film the whole thing then? Uh, that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> we, we shot for 10 days initially, um, and then that's when we paused and rewrote, and then we shot for like four days after that, um, and then like six months later, because then winter hit in Minnesota, which is the great thing about shooting in Minnesota is, uh, yeah, we had to wait till next spring before we could like, <laughs> shoot anything else because it's all outside um so yeah like six months later we shot four more pages and the longer you let something sit like that the more you have time to think about it and you want to add things and change things so like we shot for like two and a half years um and then it was finally like okay we really got to just like like wrap this up <laughs> because if we keep picking up and shooting more stuff like i'm just going to come come up with more ideas it's never going to end <laughs> any other audience questions here Oh, again. Yes. All right. Uh, pardon me. I was getting my work, my my thoughts assembled. What did you learn about yourself, or how do you feel you changed throughout this process of filming this movie? Hmm. Um. That's a good question. Um. I mean, I really there was a lot of times during this process where I thought I failed miserably. <laughs> um. I was I was very scared because I never never put this much money into a project before so you know there's never been like this much on the line yeah. um and i was like oh man like a couple people that gave us some money to make this like what if it doesn't work um so that like that was kind of scary um and we had never sh you know i'd only ever shot for like three four days max on short films which is like easier to keep the energy up the, the momentum um like everyone had always had a blast on every short I ever made, and like that, that meant a lot to me. Like even more than whatever the final product was, the fact that everyone had a good time, because sometimes making movies is not a good time, that meant a lot to me. And there was there was days where everyone really wanted to go home <laughs> on Frogman, and that yeah, it's just um, I learned a lot about like okay, if I'm gonna keep making features, like I really got to put more consideration into the comfort of everyone else involved. Um, because no one's more invested than I am. Like, you know, when you're directing the movie, no one is more invested than you are, um, even if you have your best friends there. Like, you gotta take care of them. Um, and I knew that, but, you know, I really wanted to make this, like, with that Blair Witch mentality, and nobody else did. <laughs> so I had to pivot, and I had to be like, okay, you know, we're gonna, you know, we're, we won't just, like, go out and run in the woods every night. We'll make this a little more comfortable. That could have been solved though. Just have him running around the woods, getting lost, and the frog man disappears. It's like totems in the middle of the forest. I thought that's all we needed. I guess yeah. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Um, Justin. So the frog man himself was practical effects. It's an actual suit, right? Who has the suit? Ooh. And like, like. Is it in storage, or does like this person that has it, does he like wear it around the house, grocery <laughs> store? Like, what's up with the suit? Um, the suit's at Ryan Shadley's studio, who built it. Um, the head's in decent condition. The rest of the suit is pretty, yeah, it's pretty messed up. Um, because we, we made the suit with the intent of this like very petite woman uh, to wear it, which she did for the initial filming. And then when we picked up filming, when we shot the cave stuff, it was our buddy who was quite bigger than her. <laughs> so yeah, we had that that suit got put through the ringer. He, he stretched it out real good. <laughs> I think she saw the wand, which if you guys want to see the wand, it's out there. 
Yeah. Ang Tan? We're just gonna make it through season three. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, Anthony enjoyed the film a lot. I have two questions, so I'll just put them out real quick. Um, it can be kind of challenging doing a found footage film because there's those tropes you try not to fall into, like shouldn't they turn off the camera and try to run away? Um, I want to ask you, did you struggle when you were writing this and shooting this to try to not have scenes like that? And second, you talk about doing a sequel. If you did do a sequel, would it also be found footage or more of a conventional narrative? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I love found footage. Um, I love the rough stuff. I love the high budget stuff. I love all of it. I mean, not the, not the bad movies, but you know, like, <laughs> they do a good job. Um, and the rules, I mean, I think everyone has their own set of rules. You know, or like what's important to stick to. And for me, like why the camera is rolling is one of those. Um, and e like, even though that rule is important to me, we still took the liberty a couple times, like with the long scene in the car and the long scene in the, in the Airbnb. And like, there was even one more that we cut. Um, Cause I was like, this is just getting too far. And like, we, we even tried to justify those with like, well, Scotty's trying to get, you know, like the juicy drama up in the movie. Um, so he's secretly rolling. Um, but yeah, it was it was really easy to write um, without that becoming an issue because that was important from a, for us from the beginning. So like the fact that Dallas is on this tirade to get proof that Frogman exists made it really easy to justify that the camera would be rolling the whole time because um, that's all that matters to them. I, I think the majority of the time where that becomes an issue in other found footage movies is where everyone is more afraid for their life than whatever is happening. And that's never uh, a problem for Dallas. Like, you know, he wants Frogman to eat him <laughs> so he can get the shot. Um, and when it comes to the sequel, as of right now, yeah, it's still found footage. Um, it's a very different, uh, like, frame than this one. Um, you know, Scotty doesn't really give a shit about this movie. He's going on a high camera. He thinks the whole thing's a joke. Um, no one's taking it super seriously. In the sequel, it would be people behind the camera taking it more seriously, like trying to make a legitimate documentary. Um, so it's gonna look a little bit different. Um, and yeah, we, I mean, we're writing a really big movie, so we definitely are running into points in the script right now where I'm like, how are we gonna shoot this found footage? Hmm. Uh, but I haven't given up yet. I really don't wanna do the mixture thing. I think there's movies that, have, that have mix the media uh, successfully. Um, but it still kind of feels like a cheat to me. So I either want it to be found footage or not. I like the point too where you said like Dallas wanted to get eaten in a lot of found footage films. Like being scared, I thought what you did really good was blend the comedy with the horror and you don't really see that in found footage as much anymore. It's kind of just straight to the to the fear. So I thought that was really cool that you made it more humor. Yeah, thanks. I think, I mean, we, we knew making a movie about Frogman, it was like, okay, let's try and make the scary scenes scary or like take them seriously. Um, I thought we, didn't, we never had to try to be funny because it's inherently gonna be funny, like that they're trying to catch a bipedal frog creature from <laughs> Um And I can't, I can't remember where I heard this, but someone was like the best satire, like doesn't, like the best satire isn't in of the joke. Or, or isn't make you know the best satire isn't making fun of the thing that they're parodying you know like the best satire like kind of fits into the the echelon of like movies that they're trying to emulate and that's kind of how I thought of this it's like it is definitely satire but hopefully also feels like legitimate found footage I wanted Frogman after he jumped on the car to just start driving it for again <laughs> drive away in the car it'd be hot for the next movie please thank you me any other questions. What was it about the creature Frogman that inspired you to make a film? Um, I feel like I had amnesia and I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> like where I got serious about this, but I do have a weird fascination with frogs. Um, I, I love creature features. I love found footage. Um, I think cryptids and found footage just go together perfectly anyways. Like the footage and photos that we have of supposed cryptids just like is everything that we try to make found footage movies feel like anyways. Um, and Nate, who plays Dallas, is our friend, and he just kind of like will film himself running around the woods, like looking for animals at night. 
um, and focused it on his Instagram stories. So it was like very easy to imagine him doing this. <laughs> so just like all those elements kind of kind of came together. And us like wanting to finally make a feature um, and, and trying to come up with something that we could do for, you know, whatever amount of money we could raise. Um, thankfully, we got a pretty good amount of money so that we could make a real frog um, and get some get some good effects in here, but we were ready to make it for nothing if we had to, just to break the seal and finally make a feature. So there's a few more questions. My dad actually has a question. <laughs> Um, we used a high camera. We actually shot on, a, on the camera that they show in the movie, um, which was my dad's camera when I was a kid that he would shoot our like family vacations on. Um, I actually shot this entire movie over our family vacation videos. Because <laughs> uh, he had already did it. That's so it like, was so Um But those were the only tapes I had. Um, and then the stuff at night, we shot on a black magic camera because the high camera just couldn't handle like that low of light, it just turned into mud. So we shot that on black magic and then transferred it to a high tape and then played it back from the camera on the high tape to digital. Um, and like all the artifacting in here, there's not a single like visual effect when it comes to the artifacting. That was me smacking the camera and messing with the tape as it was transferring back. Huh. Oh, the budget thing. I heard. I heard you're not supposed to reveal that this okay. early in the game. So I'll just say it was, it was very low. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Obviously, you love cryptids and you're super into it. You're super passionate. I love that. Do you believe that any of cryptids actually exist, or are you like me and just want to? Um. I mean, yeah. I, I'd say I'm a skeptic, but I just lie to myself and I tell tell myself they all exist for sure, and I totally believe because um, that just feels better. And I'll say after visiting Loveland, Ohio, for real, after making this movie, like I totally believe. Like I was ready for that frog to hop out. <laughs> when, when you're driving around Loveland, Ohio at night, it's so windy, and you're just surrounded by by woods and like there's all these like guardrails everywhere that like seem like they're holding something back like you're in Jurassic Park. I was like, this is real. And how do you how do you <laughs> accidentally see a frog with a wand? I mean, what did that person say? That's what I'm saying. That, that that's how they saw. Right, right, right. You just brought up Jurassic Park. I know that was one of your like ideas for the voice of the frogman or the sound. Oh yeah. Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like when it comes to sound design and music, that's what I'm the worst at giving direction on as of right now. Um, and for this, for the sound guys, when it came to what Frogman should sound like, I was just like, you know how iconic the dinosaur sounds are in Jurassic Park? <laughs> like, just do that, but, you know, for a frog. As if that's not the hardest uh, <laughs> assignment ever. But yeah, they did a pretty good job. It just sounds like a velociraptor instead of a frog. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? One more in the back. Yeah, yeah, we, we made all that stuff. Yeah, not a single, I, I know there's like a brewery and a coffee shop that every once in a while will have like a Frogman beer or a Frogman like latte, uh, but that's it. I mean, I finally went to Loveland uh, in March of this year and I couldn't find a single Frogman thing in the whole town, except that like I went there for a Frogman festival, which this was their second year. The first year that they held that festival was like a few months after we shot this movie and, I, and it was like, a smash success. They had like thousands of people show up for this one day thing. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, there are fans out there. Okay, like maybe we got something. But also I was like, oh shit, maybe there is people to upset. <laughs> it's like, we definitely don't paint that town in a good light. Um, but they invited us to like screen the movie there uh, this year. And that was, that was incredible. Like, I mean, cause we're, you know, nobodies, but Frogman is a superstar. So like we were treated like superstars for a day, which is fun. There is a Frogman metal band I saw, or is it just a song? Oh, they did the music in here? Yeah. That's Frog Lord. Frog Lord. Yeah, but that is a real band and he, he rocked. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, you have one more question? 
Uh, so I apologize if this was answered while I stepped out with my loud ass flip flops. But frog or rat? Me? Yeah. I'm a rat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you to Paul. I can give a big round of applause for you. <laughs>